Welcome, Grade 11 Mindsetters. This is your time to shine. You're here with me, Megan, and of course, Lou, with Team Lou Megs or Megs Lou. We don't actually know how it started, but it's something that we really, really like. And I'd like to say thank you, Macmillan, for proudly sponsoring our fantastic Life Sciences show. How have you been, Lou? Not too bad in yourself. Fantastic. Let me tell you before, wait, no, actually tell us what are we doing today before I just rush into Population what? Population size. So we're having a look at how big things are, how many animals in a certain area, and how to decrease it, and how to in increase it, and all that other rubbish, and what affects it. So it's not kidneys, heart, lung, reproduction, menstrual cycle, babies? None of, none of those things, but you know, things like, I try to ask them for us to do this like at the Kruger Park, mm -hmm. where we could actually do it in real life, but they said I got two chances of that, and uh, it was null and nothing. Uh, yeah can't do it sorry guys but <laughs> other than that let me tell you where to find myself and Llewellyn and that is at facebook.com forward slash learn extra also twitter at learn extra and in case you don't know already I will post the notes for you but your notes that we're going to be doing in this whole hour together is at mindset.co.za forward slash learn forward slash extra with an X, just in case you're wondering. So I think we should get into our show and start with population size. Okay, so now that we've focused on me for once. Excuse right. me. <laughs> Hope you're with me. Let's have a look. Pop population size, nice and easy. How are we going to have a look at this and just the look over what we're actually going to do? First of all, we're going to have a look at what population size actually means. Like a definition and all of that. Hey? So the definition of pop population, okay? See what it's like. You've got to understand it. Remember, I always say 50%, uh, well, you can pass by just knowing all your definitions. Very, very, very important. So make sure that you know your definitions, right? That's why I make sure that you guys get it as often as possible. Second of all, the characteristics it's a big word. Do you know how many times I cannot say that word? Characteristics. No, there's a word that you can't say and I can. Characteristics. Yes. So yes. It's like a tongue twister for me. My, my tongue genetically Circulatory. won't do it Damn for some it. reason. Circulatory. Is that right? <laughs> Hers is circulatory. Uh, so never mind. <laughs> We're going to have a look at the parameters of a population. In other words, what, what affects the, the growth and all of that. Okay. Then we're going to have a look at how we measure the size. This is the important stuff, right? Because there's, I, I'm sorry to say, if you're not good at maths, me, <laughs> you, you're in trouble with this. But there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Try this out. You can take in a calculator, <gasps> right? A calculator. It's, 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 it's one of those things that you push buttons and it adds for you. Now, I know that I'm sounding quite not lacquer upstairs, but um, that's something I use because the other part of maths I'm not good at, right? So we stick with calculators, me, <coughs> right? And we're going to have a look at the counting, the sampling, and how to do it because it's not, it's not just a simple way, right? There is simple ways, but we need to get into depth and, and detail about it, right? So that's it. We're going to have a look at the limiting factors or the carrying capacity, okay? Those are big words that you've re got to remember and you've got to understand, okay? Big ones, and then the type of population growth. In other words, how population actually goes from two animals to 500,000. Okay, and then we have a look at, for example, what we call disease, right? So a virus, a bacteria, how that grows in us. Okay, so we have to have a look at that, your logistic and your geometric growth graphs. It's two big important things. Okay, so... Let's go straight on to the work. First thing we're going to have a look at, as I said, is your definitions, right? Your definition of a population. Now, understand, you don't have to know it word for word like this, okay? But you've got to know it in your own words. And now let me give you, give you this, the, the best information ever. Megan, are you listening? I'm listening. Okay, as long as she's listening, and you guys are. I'm tuned. It's very simple. This is needed for next year. So don't throw these notes away. These are very, 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 very important, okay? Because there might not be enough time to complete this next year. In actual fact, I don't think there is time to complete it. So this is used for next year. So next year, this section and the whole of matric gets put into the final exams. So do not throw the section away. Keep it safe. Use it. Study it now so it's easier for next year, 
Right. Cool. Now, let's have a look at it. A population, okay, is the total number of individuals, which is simple so far, right? <laughs> total number of individuals of the same species, okay? You can't do it where it comes to um, humans, chimpanzees, uh, wombats, uh, let me think of other things. The Isi dingo, well, it's a, it's a, a dingo. That's it, the dingo, dingo, right? The dingoes, the, all those things together. It's not that. It is humans, okay? The species, humans, right? Okay? That, uh, we said it's a, the species that, uh, how do I put this? I'm trying to get it. A specific area. It's got to be occupying a super, a, a, all in one area. I'm trying to think of the best way to, to put it. Okay, so it occupies, it's very simple, they're occupying, but it's got to be a specific area. So, um, my backyard, that's a specific area. Big right? place, big place. Okay, my pool area. <laughs> there we go. Just the pool area is we doing everything there and we counting beetles, for instance. So it's a specific area. It's not my whole block or it's not my block and my school's block and... You understand, it's a specific area. So we're having a look at a specific area and that are able, this is very, very, very important. They are able to interbreed. In other words, they can mate to breed. Breed, right? Not breed, breed, okay? To make new children, right? New offspring. So in other words, it cannot be a cat and a dog because they're not gonna make new offspring, even though I would love to have a big, uh, well, uh, uh, how do you call it, a Great Dane mixed with a beautiful, like, cat. And out comes this big cat that is going to be my pet that's not in the wild. Hey, what do you think, Megan? That'd be good. That, that would big be awesome. Cat big cat mixed with a dog. Can you imagine? It's like cat dog. <laughs> It'll be huge. Yeah. It'll be so cool. Right. So, and the last thing, it's got to be at a specific time. So we can't do some of it now and some of it in a year's time okay the, the populations change things change right so the last thing that we're having a look at is a specific time so if we have a look at it okay if we read that again so have a good look at the board and go there it's a population is the total number of an individual of the same species that occupy a specific area and that are able to interbreed okay so they're able to interbreed at a specific time. Okay, so that is the whole thing. That is the definition. Okay, now remember, I said to you, you don't have to know it word for word, but you've got to understand it. There's no such thing as knowing everything off, uh, uh, word for word. It's about understanding things. That's what life science is about, understanding. Right, now, you get to the part where, like for me, I'll never understand a lady and the ladies will never understand a man. I get it. But biology or life science, we understand. Yes, Megan. Got it. Good girl. Mm -hmm. Now, characteristics <laughs> of a population. Okay, let's have a look. Density. Okay, what is density? You guys that do science will know what density means, right? And if we have a look at it's the number of individuals per unit area or per unit volume. Now, that might be strange and you cannot understand it. Okay, so if we have a look at it, it's the number of individuals per unit area, in other words, area squared. So uh, it's, let's say it's a meter, it's a meter by a meter by a meter by a meter, right? Or cubed, which means it's a meter by a meter by a meter by a meter, so it's a square on the floor, right? And it goes up by a meter. Okay, so it's a whole thing, it's a volume, you can fill it up with water. So a glass contains volume, but the floor on the bottom cont con contains area. Y you understand, I hope you're getting it from me. Right, now, we don't have to know it so in detail, like maths, but as soon as you understand, it makes it easier. Right, okay, so let's have a look. We're looking at sex ratios, okay? We need to have a look, for example, if we have the ratio of males and females. So let me just put it there so I can, and individuals without a pop, within a population. If I have a look, <coughs> stick, stick with me here. 10 female in the house, just picture this. <laughs> me, myself and I, just this person here, right, has 
Ten wives. Right? Ten wives. That is so cool. Polygamist. No, no, but it, it'll never happen. Uh-huh. Right? Uh, we all uh, make sure of that. Difficult to stay wife. with one. Right? But ten wives. Okay? That means I can choose whichever I want, whenever I want, however I want. Right? But if we have my ten wives and my brother and myself and uh, my, let's say, cousin, and we're all staying in the, same w- in the same area, and we have to share the ten wives, right? I'm going to find a favorite. That's the way it works. That's what humans are like. We find a favorite. He finds a favorite. Now, what happens if we like the same girl? What will happen, Megan? That'll be a bit of a problem. Let me give it the old. Yeah, let's sort this out outside <laughs> type the, deal. The old way of fighting, string it up <laughs> like this. Right, here's a bit of boxing, <laughs> right? And if there's boxing, okay, somebody's going to get hurt. Okay, now, now, what happens if I don't quit and he doesn't quit? Somebody could die. Okay, you, do you understand where I'm coming from? So <coughs> you've got to have a look at the individuals of sex and numbers, and there's a lot of things we've got to have a look at in this section. Right, so let's have a look. The next thing is pattern of distribution. Okay, so how many are found on a specific, in a specific area? So I know there's a moth. Now, please understand, I know my life science. The problem is I don't know specific animals that land on specific places. It's because I've never had to. But there is a moth. Right? A a moth or a butterfly. I I can't remember which one. But he comes and flies along and he wants to go land on a leaf because he's got to drop his eggs there. The egg's going to hatch and you're going to get the worms. Right? I'm trying to make it easy. And those worms will eat the leaf and grow up and become a butterfly and off he goes and lays eggs again. Okay? So, yes, you all know this. It's like a silkworm. Okay? Put it there. Now, this butterfly will fly along and have a look at each leaf. And if he sees more than two eggs, Right? He leaves the leaf alone because that means he's not going to have enough food for the, his baby or her baby, should I say. Her baby. Do you, do you understand where I'm coming from? So that is what we do with this. So we have a look at how many people on a specific area. So here we go. <coughs> the way in which individuals or a population are distributed over an area that, it, uh, that they can occupy. Right? And the distribution may be random. Okay, or clumped or uniform. Okay, we'll learn each and every one of these things. Okay, we'll learn. So either random, in other words, there'll be 10 over there, there'll be 2 over here, there'll be 5 over there, right? Or clumped, we all, in this area, in your classroom is clumped. If they just throw all the people in your school inside it, that'll be clumped. Okay, then you get the random, which is some will sit over there, there'll be 10 over there, there'll be one at this desk, four at those desks over there, and then uniformly, this way, this way, you sit in rows and it's imperfect, right? There's one in this area, one in that area, one in that area, that's where your territories come along. Right, so let's have a look at pictures, because I learn by pictures, and I've tried to put as many pictures as possible, but we need to understand. Okay, if we have a look, there's two top leaves behind me on the board, right? Two, two top leaves. The first one that is on the left-hand side, okay, you will see that there's six beetles. Okay? Let me just count them with you. Here it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, let's say that they're eating that leaf. Six would be able to live comfortably. Okay? The next one on the right-hand side, have a look how many beetles. Now, I would circle them, but I'd like to teach you some more things, not just stay on the beetles all day. Right? So you, you get where I'm coming from. Okay? There's a lot. So it's distributed. There's too many there. It's not going to last long. Next thing, you go underneath. I've had a look at sex ratios. Okay? On the right hand side, you will see females chilling, having a good time. Right? I'm sure in the corner, if you, if you have a look, if you're looking at me, right? And we're looking at this board, and to the right of it, I'm sure there's a spa where they do their nails and facials and, and all of that stuff, right? So it's chilled and it's nice and it's everything. And then at the top corner, there's this one male and he is proud. <laughs> that is me standing. He says, come on, this is mine. I'm loving life, right? Look at the left-hand side. These two mates, now they've got to fight. 
It's exactly what I said. They're going to fight because the strongest gene has got to win. And the ladies only like the strongest gene. Okay? We're the only p things on earth, humans, that don't fight for dominancy. Right? We shouldn't fight for dominancy because there's a girl for everybody. Right? <coughs> cool. Well, <laughs> more for me, of course. Right. So we, we're all happy with this. You got it. Now, Megan, no, don't say I'm laughing because seriously. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just sneezed and everyone's like, whoop. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Pardon me. Parameters, okay, of a population. In other words, what controls the size of a population? Right, that's all it is. Now, what I want to do is I want you to remember parameters. And you can have a look in your textbooks or, or whatever, but we're going to have a break. And bef while we're having this break, I want you to stretch and I want you to go over your head. Now, it's pointless going into your textbooks now. I want you to think for yourself. Put one and two, one together. What do you think parameters would include? But now remember, this is for yourself. So if you go look in your book, you, you, you you, you're not actually doing anything good for yourself. I want you to think for yourself. You've done these things before. Okay, so I think you need a break. With that, I guess we're going to go to a break. Go get some water. And mindset is Lou and I will be right back. Welcome back, Grade 11s. You're back with me and Lou here in studio on Learn Extra Live. I posted all the notes for you, so if you just go look at the Macmillan post, that's right there for you in case you have any questions. The Curio, there's a Curio post on Facebook and on Mixit. It's available on any mobile platform. You just log on, ask questions, and the passcode for you is LS, Life Sciences obviously, so LS11. And mindset needs you. I'm going to read you what you need to give to your teacher to enter them for. Grade 10s to 12 CAPS development, review, as well as video presentation. This can be entered on mindset.co.za forward slash learn forward slash jobs. Register online, send your teachers in, and hopefully, you never know, they could be here on Mindset with Team Mindset. So over to Lou now. Oh yeah. Now, while you were thinking about <laughs> parameters, <coughs> just got to say, Gatsby. Good. <laughs> I'm impressed. Just, you got to, you got to understand. Between me and you, we, 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 we understand each other. Just one little problem, but you got to work for it. You can't just ask for it. You get what I'm trying to say. You got to make a plan and find it. You can't just like ask for numbers. <laughs> got to make a plan, then. Right. Oh, Gatsby. <laughs> and she's all red. So you've done at least something good for you. You made day. me blush, Gatsby. Thank you. <laughs> so if we have a look at parameters, right? It's what determines the population size, what affects the population size. So what I've done is I've put it up here on the board so that you could see round about what it is. Okay? So here we go. A population parameter, right, is the factors that determine the size of a population. Simple. Okay? It's what it affects the change that occurs over time. You with me? It's, I will show you what they are, but the parameters, if they say, what is a, param a parameter of, of the population, you must be able to mention the following. Right, so let's have a look at it. I'm gonna bring it down, and here's the first one. Mortality. <coughs> now, mortality, I remember a, 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 a video game. Do you remember the video game, Mortal Kombat? I've right. never touched <laughs> a PlayStation or Xbox game in my life. I'm sorry. I'm absolutely useless at it. Okay, I just broke your heart a little bit. Sometimes <laughs> it confuses me. <laughs> it's understandable. Right? You even got it in the shops. Did you never get in the shops and you got the little joystick and the button and you went and you no, spun it? No, I lost. I used to play that little fiery thing, a little fox. Little fox. In like uh, Spur. Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, in, in Spur. That's <laughs> it. So... Well, we've all done it and we've played those games. And, and if you don't, Mortal Kombat was a big fight and how you, how you destroyed the heads and everything like that. And, and you killed them in this way. And, and all, you, know, you know what I'm getting? So mortal, right, means death in this case. Okay? Mortality. It's the rate, right, at which new individuals, right, are lost. Get that? Yeah, yeah. You thought, you thought it was new individuals are introduced. Huh? It is lost 
They die, okay? Lost to the population through death. It is not we packed up our bags and joined a different country, right? This is death. Now, simple. Next one we are going to have a look at. Immigration. Now, immigration, the way you're going to remember that, I want you to remember the first letter of this word. This is how you're going to remember it. The first letter of the word. E, right? The letter I. Now, movement is part of this. I stands for in, right? We coming into an area. You get what I'm trying to say? So, immigration means I'm moving from somewhere into this area. And now I'm joining the population, which means it's getting bigger. Okay, so if it has a look here, the rate at which new individuals, right, join a population from somewhere else. Easy, right. Next one is emigration. And emigration has got a, an E. And E stands for exits. So it exits, it leaves the population to go join another one. That means this population is getting smaller. Okay, so yeah, it is the rate at which an individual, of course, of a population, it leaves a population to somewhere else. Now, let me explain it to you in this way, which is never going to happen for some reason, because that's how I think, right? I need to emigrate South Africa to immigrate into Australia. Hey, huh? does that make no, sense? Um, no, I, I would never do that. No. Uh, I'd like to stay with this beautiful country. But Stunning country. That was a way to explain it. I emigrate South Africa and immigrate into Australia. Okay, maybe I could pick a better place. I emigrate out of South Africa and I immigrate into Hawaii. Ooh. See, nah, nah, I've got bora, bora. Too, right? Bora, bora, nice. So, do you get where I'm coming from? Now, I've got a diagram here. So, have a good look and understand where everything comes from. Right, this, as I said, all these diagrams normally I try as hard as I can to get it from the Macmillan book so that, so that you guys can understand it and see it. It's a good book, it helps a lot. Right, so let's have a look at immigration. Have a look at the arrow, right? Birth, have a look at the arrow. Death, have a look at the arrow, and immigration, have a look at the arrow. Now, there are the four things. Death, this is the population, right? This is the population. If I have 10,000 in the population, right, and nine die, now we've got 9,901. Right, do you get what I'm trying to say? The population has decreased. If I have a look at immigration, we have 10,000 and 10 join. We have 10,000 and 10. Look at birth rate. We have 10,000 and we have three new individuals or three mothers that have just given birth. We have 10,000 and three. Simple. And then, of course, immigration, that is when we lose. So if we've got 10,000 and 5,000 leave, we end up with... 5,000. Very, very easy. Okay, do you understand where I'm coming from? Now, each one of these things are due, well, well, come about by certain factors. Okay? Like, death could come to certain factors. Old age, not enough food. Do you get it? Predators. Okay? Immigration. Sun, right? Food. We've moved from that country into this country because it's beautiful. I mean, they always say the grass is greener on the other side, right? So true. Okay. Maybe not. Because yeah, but I mean, the grass is greener. So what are we going to do? We're going to go eat the grass. That's how it works. That's where the the um, track of the what's it? The wildebeest. The mm. the long track. I can't remember the name. Right? And they go across a big river, and crocodiles want to eat them, and they all go in there because the grass is greener on the other side, and then. When that goes to winter, they come back. It's a big migration. Right? That's what it means. Okay? So they all leave this area and go join another area, and then they come back. Okay? So that is immigration. Okay, immigration. Immigration, they're leaving. Immigration, they're coming in. And then, of course, birth, which we spoke about. Now, you'll notice that on all of these things, okay, I've mentioned 
I've mentioned emigration, which means leaving. I've mentioned immigration, which means coming in. I've mentioned death. I haven't mentioned birth. There's a reason for it. There's a big reason for it. But I'll leave it there. Let's see how good you are. Okay. Now, if I have a look at the next one, measuring population size. Now, guys, we need to have a look at specific things. These are, it's common knowledge, but you've got to understand where we're coming from and how to do things. It's actually very, very easy. So let's have a look at it. We need, the first one is counting. The whole point of this thing is counting. We need to count. It's a counting method. So let's have a look. You're measuring the population size by counting. Like, let me tell you, right now, with you and me, the two people that are on TV, well, the, pe the amount of people that are on TV is two. I counted. Yes, one, right, and two. Two. Perfect. I'll leave it there. Um, <laughs> right, so we're having a look at it. <laughs> okay, we have the size of the population just by counting it. All organisms in the population have to be counted, okay? Physically counted. Now, if you're like me, and uh, I need, if I want to count to 20, I can only do it if I'm barefoot and have all my fingers, or, or uh, I'm in trouble, right? Count up to 20, if you get what I'm trying to say. Maybe or an abacus. <laughs> or an abacus, but in the wild, you're not gonna get it, so I've nah. got to count fingers yeah. and toes, it's mm -hmm. 20. Right, the next one, we're having a look at is to use the direct counting method. Okay, that's the first one. All the organisms must be visible. Okay, they cannot be underground. What is the point? I'm gonna count how many rabbits in this area, and there's a thousand holes, and four rabbits are up. How am I gonna know how many rabbits there are? Can I see them? You can't. You need to be able to see every one. This is where you get, for example, the elephants, right? You can count, go up in a helicopter and you can count each elephant. You, you, you get where I'm coming from. That's, a, that's the most important thing. The only thing about it is they've got to be standing still. So the real way of this working is you would use it in what things can you look at that stand still and you can count when it comes to wildlife. Megan, give me something nice. Stand and count. Yeah, something uh, that, sta that it stands all the time and you can count. A, ze a zebra. A, a zebra, hippo. A zebra runs. Okay, a right hippo. Again. Hippo swims. No, Run he underwater. stands up. Buck. Buck <laughs> eats and they're doing the grass and they run when the leopard comes. Come on. Giraffe. Giraffe does the same thing. <laughs> Come. <laughs> Have you noticed she's picked animals? Come on. Uh, what do you want me to pick? Anything. Yeah. Any single thing. In biology. In life science, in, 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 in the, 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 the Kruger Park. Pick some. Houses. Houses. <laughs> Your bungalows that you stay I in. I quit. I do. <laughs> yeah, let me help you out. Okay. Trees. Okay. <laughs> right? A tree doesn't uproot itself, pull up its root and say, I'm coming. Good. Right? They don't go visit its girlfriend no. next door by picking up her roots and running away. Doesn't do that. These things can be seen, so you can count them. There's... This one, there's 10 of those rose bushes. There's five of those rose bushes. There's 10 evergreen plants over here. There's 15 of those over there. You can count them and they don't move. You got me? If I left it up to Megan, we <laughs> never get the right number. <laughs> right. I'm the sorry. Ne Apologies. <laughs> the next one is sampling, right? Now, sampling is quite cool. I, I've always wanted to be a, a sampler. sampler. There we go. Right? We are sample <laughs> ice cream. Huh? How nice would that be? You, huh? you work at Ola or something. Ola, that's Oof. it. Sampling is the ne next one. Sampling is an alternate, uh, an alternate method of counting. Okay, it's another way. It's, it's close to counting. There are several different ways of doing it. Okay, seven different ways or seven different methods that are used to do this. Okay, now ones are more common than others, and okay, ones we use more than others. So let's have a look at it. The smaller, the, these things are used for smaller and animals that move. You, you get what I'm trying to say? So, we're having a look at uh, buck. 
They're smaller. They, I know they're not very this small. This buck, you see. Yes, but this is a different one. Just saying. Just saying. Mm. These can move. In other words, they can step. Right? They're not planted in the ground. So we're having a look at organisms that are small and move around a lot. Those are the things we're looking at. Right, so let's have a look at it. We've got the quadrant method. Now, guys, this is one of the ones that they always pick. Quadrant Quadrant, 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 method. quadrant method, right? And if we have a look at it, it is a square frame. That is no. You've got to know the size of the frame. And it's got to be even, right? For example, I've got, well, let me read the whole thing first before we go to the example. I like going that, right? Uh, you've got to know the area of it. For example, right, a metal quadrant that is 0, 0,5 meters by 0, 0,5 meters, right? So a uh, half a meter, 500 centimeters by 500 centimeters. So uh, we're going to have a block. There it is. You have a look at that. And that's 0, 0,5. And that is 0, 0,5. That is 0, 0,5. And 0, 0,5. Yes, you're with meters. Meters. Okay, cool. Now, what happens is, you will have the area, this area is of course 0, 0,25 meters squared, because it's in a square, cool? We're happy. Now, let me move it up so we can get there. This method can be used to determine, very carefully listen, to determine the type of species, the number of individuals of each species, and distributed of each species in a particular Habitat. So in other words, in this thing, I've decided to even break it down even further. So if I go like this, and I break this down, and I do inside this part, little blocks, right? Smaller blocks inside this. Now, I can find out how many of earthworms are in this area, how many beetles are in this area, where is the most beetles, where do they like going there? Why do they like it? Do you understand? That's why the quadrant method works. You go into little quad quadrants and find out the information. Yes? You cool, Megan? Find out information in quadrants. See, I've been listening. She's learning to listen. Listening. Yeah, because I'm going to put on the spot just now. <laughs> she just doesn't know it. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Right. Stand. This is how you do it. You stand. Here we go. Stand with your back to the area that you want to sample. Okay, you stand with your back to the area and then throw the quadrant over your shoulder onto the area. Why, why must we stand with our back to the area? Huh? Megan, what, what do you think? Yeah, so what happens, while she's thinking to give me the answer, <laughs> what they're actually doing is, they, I mean, you over there. So now watch this. I'm going to turn around and what he does is he grabs his quadrant and he chucks it like this and it's just going to land. I mean, how, like, Pathetic, is that? Why, that why is would they do that? No, not making sense in Megan's head right okay. now. You see, there's a reason for that. Because me, I can cheat when it comes to this. I know that there's a lot of bugs over there. So what I'll do is I'll take this thing and I'll face it and I'll go uh, <laughs> onto the right spot, right? But if I do this and I chuck it, what's going to happen? It can land anywhere. Mm. You with me? So it's not on thought, it's not this area. We're looking for a roundabout area. Trying to see which is the best part. Okay, cool. So, this will give you a random sample. Now, if Megan was reading the board with us, she would have cheated and seen that random sample. You told me I'm not allowed to read the board anymore. So she listens as well. <laughs> cool. So, in a random sample, you do not choose where the quadrant will land, which is the best thing out. You want it to be as accurate as possible. Its point is going to be exactly there or exactly there. You want it to be somewhere without you knowing because it makes it more exciting. Okay, so we're having a look at that. Then, so the results will likely be more uh, represented of the area. In other words, it's going to give you an average. Then what you actually do is you get smart. You throw it the first time. You work out that. Do it again. Throw it again. The more times you do it, the more accurate it becomes. You with me? Okay. Then, 
and and look at this, look at this. What I did. Can you have a good look? Look, look at this picture. This quadrant. Look right here. You will see over here where I'm drawing. Look at the quadrants I've put it. She's put in. Can you see it? Comes all the way there. That quadrant. Okay. She's got little lines, and there she starts counting in each quadrant. This block, we find that. This block, we find that. And you can find out exactly how many is in a specific area. Now, would you use this quadrant method to find humans? Would you use it, Megan? Why not? No, that's way too complicated. And it wouldn't work. Why not? How are you going to find a human in a block this big? So smart. That's <laughs> why she's the brains of this operation. Right, exactly. So, you understand, you use it for very, very small animals. Okay, and now, the transact, which is the la last one I, I want to do for a while, right? This one is quite cool. Transacts, right? All you have to do, well, watch it, this is cool, this is cool. You tie a line, okay? You put a piece of rope over here, tie it against a pole, and you throw it, and you tie it against another pole over there, right? And all you do, take your pen and piece of paper. Megan, you got a piece of paper there? No, sorry. Oh, no. <sighs> you can just what? pretend. People right, must so use the You got your book? Yeah. Pen and piece of paper. The line is here. You walk with one foot on this side, one foot on this side of the line, and you walk with the line and you just have a look. What's on the left and what's on the right? And you record. Huh? That's what it is. This is a simple one. You're not looking at what's over there or over there. You're doing it in this area. And you've got to write down where it is, uh, uh, how many there are, where you found them. So let's have a look at it, okay? It's a tape or a rope that is stretched across okay, a specific area of, of the ecosystem, cool? And then being in the, the area that's being investigated, okay? As you walk along the tape or rope, you identify each plant and animal that is found on this line and then you record its position. That's simple, easy, you know, it's not that bad. Now this one they don't ask as much, but I just I throw it in there so that you could get an understanding of it. Right, so now that I've given you extra information, don't forget it, right? Now that I've given it to you, I need a break. Huh? You then need you, a break, we need a glass of water, and I suggest you get a glass of water. What do you think? I think so. Okay, well, mindset is we'll see you right after the break. Welcome, my mindsetters, back to our Learn Extra Live show. Here with me and Lou, of course, on this fantastic almost evening. But we have a lot to get through, so right back to Lou in population size. Now, the only way you're going to do this is by making it exciting. So no matter how much you listen to me, no matter how much you study, no matter how much you, you put effort in, you need to try these things, boys and girls, right? It, it's very simple. Go out and have a jaw. Okay? That's the only way. I mean, every time you want to learn something, right? You must find the fun in it. Always. Always find the fun. If you want to do this counting and population size, you know what? You can study as much as you like. Go and do something. In your backyard, in the area, at, at school, during break. I know you play soccer and and talk and all of that. So let's leave it for after school where you do school activity. Okay, wait. Do it at home, <laughs> right? I'm trying Much to make better. it as nice as Thank possible. you, thank you. Okay? If you're going to go do this at home, go do it outside, see what you can do. You get out of your parents' hair and they're going to appreciate it because you're learning something and it becomes fun. Okay, now, this is also a cool one, the next, the next one that I want to show you, okay? This is called the trap. Little change. No, too much. There, the, the traps. Okay, now, the traps is, is very simple. What do you think it is? Mix, don't read the board. <laughs> what do you think it is? Is traps. it like a mouse trap, like a trap? Exactly, okay. it's a mouse trap. It's there a we trap. go. Okay, so let's have a look at it. The trap capture small animals in a habitat. So you want to go and you want to trap them. Now, you can have, when, when, when we talk about mice traps, or mouse traps and, and mice, mice traps, eh? Mouse traps. Mouse, 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 mouse traps. Mickey mouse traps. I always say, right? 
We're not talking about the one that, that the, the mouse goes for the cheese and then BAM! It's history, right? We're not talking about that. We're talking about ones where they go up a little tunnel and they fall in and there's food for them and they're all happy and they survive and at the end we let them go because we want them alive. We don't want to kill them. What's the point of killing them? Okay, cool? So we're looking at these type of things. So, um, where am I? No, that one, yeah, there we go. Okay, the trap method. What you need to do, at one, one of the things, okay, you put a trap consisting of a jar or a cup in the ground. So you dig a hole. Right? This, this is all up there. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save you a bit of time and, and run through it. So, so this is up. You need to watch. Okay? You, you make it the same level as ground. You dig a hole. You go get a cup. Now, this cup has got to be specific things. Okay? It's got to have a little ridge on it, first of all. Okay? You've got to dig a hole in the ground. Then you've got to put the cup or it's a plastic cup or, or whatever it is. Okay? Glass cup or whatever. And you put it in the ground and you make it level with the ground. So it's identical and level with the ground, yes? The sides of it have got to be very smooth. Now, the reason why it is very smooth is because, Megan? The mouse trap. See, <laughs> she was not paying attention. So bad of me. Okay, put a cup in the <coughs> ground, sides have to be smooth, why? How can a cup be in the ground and not be smooth? It can't no, be right. I'm talking about... What cup? We want to capture something. Oh, right. Something small. Yes, okay? like so a spider. We dig a hole in the... Exactly, like a spider. So we dig a hole in the ground, we put a cup in, it's got to be level with the ground. Why does the inside of the cup have to be smooth? Because you're trapping an animal. So? So? What happens if it's not smooth? I don't know. What happens if it's not smooth? Okay, how many people have ever climbed a very smooth-faced rock? <laughs> and how many have climbed ones that have got, like, jagged edges in it? <laughs> Which are going to be easier? Come, stick with me, Megan. Smooth. The smooth is going to be easier. No. It's gonna yes. Be more yeah, she <laughs> lost it. She's never climbed, right? The reason why it's a smooth edge is so that they cannot get up. They're going to slip down. How many animals get out of your bath once they're inside the bath? Zero. That's why you always find spiders and that in the bath is because they can't get out. Their webs are not going to help them. It's very smooth, right? So, that's the first one. And then we put it in the area and, and we count how many things are left okay the next one is called a sticky the sticky tape okay now this is the same type of thing is when you've got a lot of flies bothering you outside you will notice a lot of people do it they get go to the shop they get this tape they pull out this tape like this they stick it up and what happens there with the flies all the little flies go, and they bah! that's it and they stick to there and they stick onto it now these flies are going to die right but you can still count them Right, the, the, the flies don't last very long, so they're going to die anyway. So let's count them quickly and get it over and done with. Are, are you with me? So that's an, uh, another way. I'm not, I'm not very fond of that one, though. But anyway, okay. So the sticky surface, they hang on. The, 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 the fly hangs on for dear life. I don't know how else to say it. Right? They get stuck to it, and you hang it on a tree, and, and it's quite dark, horrible. Okay, so that is that part. I've made the cup here, so you can have a look. It's nice and level with the ground, okay? That little animal there is... Ne oh, gee, let's get some other colours going here. That little animal there is never going to get out. That is a wood louse, or lice. Louse, lice, lice. Lice? Lice, there. Wood <laughs> lice, right? And they, they, have, they don't like light. They're negatively uh, photo-responsing animals. Right. So, cool. They don't like the light. So, they're going to live in the dark, but they're going to get captured. Okay. Now, you've also got the next one. The direct observation. These are large animals. Okay. So, when I'm saying large, I'm talking about elephants. Right. So, let's have a look. Animals or plants, it can be both, okay, that walk around. Now, these animals can move around. So you can walk with it. That's why I said walk around and skip the whole life. Okay, so what happens is you're going to walk around and you're going to say, okay, there's an elephant, there's a rhino, there's everything, right? So this whole thing is very important. Okay, it's about counting and you can look and you can find the birds and it's a very easy and simple way. Okay, so that is the direct observation. You have a look at it. 
Okay, the field guide is the last one, and you all know the field guide. When you go to the Kruger National Park, they whip out a book and say, there we go, and you go, okay, this is what you're finding here. These are the ones. Oh, look, there's springbuck, there's cheetah, there's leopard, there's lion, there's water buffalo, there's, uh, I can mention quite a few, but do you get where I'm coming from? Okay, now, the one that they're going to ask you the most, and I want you to listen to this very carefully. The one they are going to ask you is the mark recapture mark method. Okay, now, your mark recapture mark method is cool. So I want to get to this. So you need to listen to me very, very, very carefully. What they do, okay, is they chase a couple of animals inside an area and they capture as many as they can around them. They don't have to catch all of them, but they catch as many as they can. So you see them got these big ropes and they chase all the springbuck or the, or the impala and all of that into an area. And then what they do is they mark them. They don't brand them. They mark them with a the type of paint that's going to come off. But they wait. They, they, they make sure that the paint's not going to hurt them. Then they let them go. Okay? And then they wait for a while. Not, not a day, maybe two days. And then they do the same thing and they capture as many as they can. Okay? And that's the whole part. Mark, recapture, mark method. What happens is... This whole sum, there's a sum for it. And I'm going to go straight to the sum. Here it is. I'm going to go to yellow because it's nice and important. Here's the formula. Make sure you know it. Okay. To work out the population. Okay. It's the number that you first caught. Remember we caught a certain amount. Let's say we caught 10. Okay. There we go. We caught 10. Yes. Okay. Now, first sample. How many is in the first sample? Let's see. How many we caught in the second sample? Okay, let's say we have 20. Okay, so we've got 20 in a second song. Okay, we're all happy with that. Now, what's 10 times 20, Megan? Pardon? 10 times 10 is? 100,000. What's 10 times 20? 2,000. Okay, so that is going <laughs> to equal to 2,000. Testing me on my maths here. No, I couldn't Just answer note, it. I am out of school. <laughs> I couldn't answer it, so I'm going to give it to her, <laughs> right? So let's, hopefully she's right. 2,000, I right? So. Now, it says your number of marked in the second captures. Okay, um, you've got, you got to understand that it's, uh, um, what do you call it, number marked at the bottom. Let's say that there was only two that was marked. Now, the question is, is Megan right with 2,000 or 200? 200. Yeah, see, you see now, oh, you understand why I'm, I'm, I can't do this Just take one little knot away. Right, so we're going to say go. 200, okay? Making me look bad. Then. You're making me look bad. Right, so <laughs> let's say there is two captured. Oh, the, in, in, that, in that 20, in that whole 20, only two are marked from the first capture, okay? So we're dividing by two. So it's 200 divided by 2. What's 200 divided by 2? Mm -hmm. Where's my divide? Oh, gosh, I don't have a divide here. Do you know what it is? 100? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So <laughs> Back to basic maths. <laughs> we're going to have a look at it. There is going to be 100 in a certain area. In that area, we've got to know we're going to do a kilometer at a time. Okay, we're going to do a kilometer at a time, and in that kilometer, these are the animals that we're going to check. Okay, so, guys, this one always gets asked. Please, you've got to know this up. Now, before we go, I've got to apologize. My maths is beautiful. That's why we take calculators in. Exactly. Do Just you understand why we do it? Very good. Mm. Good observation. Calculators were made for life science <laughs> students so that we can answer the maths questions. And right. for me and you. <laughs> good luck, guys. I will see you ne next week. Right, so join us again. Yes, Team Lou Megs, Megs Lou, hello. But I just want to say thank you for amazing, amazing show, Grade 11s. You were fantastic. Thank you, Mac Mullen, for proudly sponsoring our fantastic Life Sciences show. And I just want to tell you that I loved your posts and comments all on the page. I'll read them to Lou. And I just hope you have a fantastic evening. I'll see you next week. Love from me to you. Have a great day.